Hello everyone, my name is Ray. Thank you for visiting my channel and please don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm taking a break from my homemade lathe project to discuss these. My homemade tools. If you've seen some of my turning videos, you have seen me use some of these tools. I'm like, hey, where did he get that? Well, I don't, I've never seen one of those before. Today I'm going to show you what these are. Okay, well, I'm going to show you four of my homemade custom tools that I've been using. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen me use these at some point. Uh, the first tool is my drill chuck and a handle. Uh, this is a standard drill chuck. Came off of a uh, it says Craftsman around them. Came off of a Craftsman drill, a three eighths Craftsman drill. Uh, I've, whenever I've had a drill that uh, went bad, I just I always take the chuck off and uh, and save them to use uh, somewhere down the line. So this is a, uh, a an original um, Sorby Robert Sorby handle from my very first uh, Sorby gouge as a matter of fact about 20 years ago I bought that um, this is a piece of half inch rod that the the uh, end of it was was turned down to 3 8 and what I did is I took uh, that rod similar to this rod right here and uh, just imagine that the end was a little bit uh, smaller in diameter about 3 8 and uh, I put in a vise and I, I took this this die and I, uh, I just threaded the end of it uh, about a half an inch or so just threaded it down uh, to, fit, to fit that chuck uh, and uh, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be centered, doesn't have to be concentric because you're not actually going to be spinning the tool. So what I do is I, uh, I set the tool on the tool rest like so, like this, and uh, I just plunge it in. I just uh, drill as deep as I want and I just plunge it in now. So very useful tool to have. Uh, if you don't have something like this, I recommend that you uh, get something together because it's very, very useful. Uh, and of course, being a chuck means you can change the bits out. Very, very handy. Uh, the next tool is my uh, my ingrain bowl tool. This is my ingrain bowl gouge. If you're not familiar with ingrain bowl work, you uh, you'll find that a spindle gouge works extremely well on on uh, ingrain bowls. So uh, this is not a bowl gouge; it's a spindle gouge. And of course, never use a spindle gouge on a face grain uh, project. But uh, for ingrain, uh, uh, it works phenomenally. Uh, to hollow out and shape and, and, and cut on a, on a bowl. So this tool is 36 inches long and it, it is heavy. This thing weighs about 10 pounds. So this spindle uh, gouge is actually the gouge that was in this handle originally. It was too short to be useful so I took it out of there and then uh, had, had some uh, use for that handle. So uh, this is a piece of one inch round bar stock. Nothing special, just mild steel. I took and I drilled a, a half inch hole for, for the uh, the shank of the spindle gouge and then I drilled two holes I, I really only used one but two just in case drilled and tapped two holes for a set screw to hold the uh, the uh, the spindle gouge in place so uh, the one inch rod is actually pressed into a piece of pipe this is this is black pipe nothing special uh, common everyday welded seam pipe you can see that there um, and uh, it's it's worked fantastic it's actually the weight has been great for dampening vibration and what I might actually do is fill this handle with lead and make it even heavier. Uh, I was actually surprised how well a heavy tool, the heavier the better, uh, especially some of the large diameter work that I do. I'm going to put a link in the upper right showing you uh, the pine bowl that I, the, la the last thing I turned with this tool. Um, the next tool I'd like to discuss is my termite tool handle. Uh, this is your standard one way termite tool, I mean nothing special about it. You can pick these up rather inexpensively. I think I paid thirty dollars for these brand new, you know, real common. Um, but if you are interested in a termite tool, you'll find that the handle is actually quite expensive. The tip is cheap, but the handle is expensive. So I had a piece of three-quarter inch uh, round bar. This is about thirty inches long. Again, this one's pretty heavy. This one I would say is about five pounds, five or six pounds. Uh, drilled a hole for the termite tool, and again a cross hole that I drilled and tapped for a set screw. And then you'll you'll notice that I tapered the end. And this was so I wouldn't have a large diameter uh, very close to the tool. I would have clearance. So I wouldn't have to worry about uh, that large diameter hitting any of the work that I'm doing. Uh, so it, uh, it would be uh, uh, free from striking the uh, workpiece. Um, what I would do differently is I would make this taper a little bit shorter. Uh, because right now I have to have the tool rest all the way back here. So uh, if I had to make another one, I, and I might still, I just make this taper a little bit shorter. Uh, doesn't didn't need to be this long, but it works great. Um, if you if you're thinking about that and you have some uh, some skills, I would recommend you make one of those. 
The uh, last tool, last but definitely not least, is uh, very similar to the uh, in construction to my uh, my end grain bowl gouge, uh, but uh, it's a little bit different. So if you notice, this is not round. If you notice, that is a hex shape. Uh, it's actually quite useful. So what happens is I can set a tool in the tip. I can use router bits. That's what this is for, really. This is um, this is actually a metal lathe. Uh, tool, but y you can change any tool you want there. As a matter of fact, I can even put any uh, gouge in there if I like. So because of the hex shape, you have a nice flat spot that would rest on the tool rest. And you can use that and orient your tool uh, tip at an exact measurement. If you, needed, if you needed that tool to be presented at, let's say, 45 degrees, you can clock that in based on uh, the flat of the hex bar, and when you set it on your tool rest, that tool will always be at 45 degrees. It's very handy to have. Uh, it's very, very useful. So a piece of hex bar that I had lying around, this is a one inch hex. Again, drill the hole and two cross holes that are drilled and tapped for set screws. And again, a piece of black pipe. Nothing special about the handle, it's just a piece of black pipe. Again, it's hollow. And um, this one is actually a little bit heavier. It's about 11, 12 pounds uh, because of the... Uh... Well, I hope you enjoyed watching and learning about my custom homemade tools. I hope that maybe these gave you some ideas and uh, you can go and make some of your own. If you have any questions at all, uh, please put them in the comments. I do read the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And um, if, uh, if there I could help you in any way, I'd be more than happy to. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.